$1 trillion in global trade every single year. All of it squeezed through a 120-mile bottleneck in Egypt that's barely wider than a football field in some spots. Remember March 2021, when the Ever Given got stuck sideways in the Suez Canal? Six days was all it took to paralyze world commerce. Oil prices spiked, supply chains collapsed, and billions were lost every hour. But while the world panicked, Russia saw opportunity. They're building something that could make the Suez Canal obsolete, a frozen superhighway through the Arctic that cuts the Asia-Europe journey in half. The question is, can Russia turn the world's most hostile waters into the planet's most valuable trade route? This is the Northern Sea Route, 3,000 miles of Russian Arctic coastline that could become the world's most important shipping lane. For centuries, this route was locked in ice, impassable, a frozen wasteland that claimed ships and crews who dared to challenge it. But something's changed. The ice barrier that kept this route sealed for generations is retreating. Russia isn't waiting, throwing everything at this gamble, $150 billion. Nuclear icebreakers, deep water ports carved into permafrost, military bases scattered across the Arctic like chess pieces. The engineering here is insane. You're building infrastructure in temperatures that hit minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, on ground that's frozen solid for most of the year, where a single mistake means your port foundation could crack and collapse when the permafrost shifts. But Russia's secret weapon is the Arctica-class nuclear icebreakers. Massive floating cities of steel and nuclear power. Each one stretches 560 feet long and weighs 33,000 tons. Their nuclear reactors generate enough power to crush through ice walls 10 feet thick. Picture this, a massive container ship following behind one of these nuclear giants, carving a path through ice that would stop any other vessel dead. The icebreaker's hull is reinforced steel, designed to ram straight through barriers that have blocked this route for millennia. And it's working. In 2023, over 400 ships use the Northern Sea Route. China alone sent 77 vessels through these waters, carrying everything from electronics to rare earth metals. The time savings are staggering. 15 days from Shanghai to Hamburg versus 30 days through the sewers. Russia's building the infrastructure to handle this explosion in traffic, with new deep water ports at Murmansk and Sabeta. Cargo terminals that can operate year-round despite the brutal conditions. Satellite networks and communication systems to guide ships through waters where GPS signals get sketchy and rescue is days away. The port construction alone is a marvel of engineering madness. They're using specialized concrete that can withstand freeze-thaw cycles that would crack normal foundations. Heated loading docks to prevent cargo from freezing solid. Breakwaters designed to handle ice flows the size of city blocks. China's betting big on this route. They've invested billions in Russian Arctic infrastructure projects. Chinese shipping companies are retrofitting their fleets with ice-strengthened hulls. They're training crews for Arctic navigation. This has become their backup plan for when the sewers gets blocked again. The route's advantages go beyond speed. No pirates, no political instability in countries you have to pass through. No narrow choke points where a single accident can shut down global trade. But here's the catch. This is still seasonal shipping. Even with nuclear icebreakers, the route is only fully navigable for about four months a year. The rest of the time, you're gambling with weather conditions that can trap ships for weeks. Russia's solution is more icebreakers, building an entire fleet of these nuclear monsters. By 2030, they plan to have 13 Arctica-class vessels patrolling the route year-round. Each one costs over $750 million to build. The infrastructure investment is staggering, with emergency rescue stations every few hundred miles. Fuel depots for ships that can't make the full journey without refueling. Weather monitoring systems that can predict ice conditions weeks in advance. The on-trade routes, Russia's militarizing the Arctic faster than anyone expected. Submarine bases, 
Missile Defense Systems Radar networks that can track every ship entering their Arctic waters. The message is clear. Russia controls this route. And if it works, they'll control a quarter of global shipping by 2030. Western sanctions after 2022 didn't slow Russia's Arctic ambitions, they accelerated them. When Europe and the US cut Russia off from traditional trade routes, Moscow doubled down on the Northern Sea Route as a matter of economic survival. The sanctions created a perfect storm where Russian energy exports needed new pathways to reach Asian markets. Chinese manufacturers needed alternatives to avoid Western-controlled shipping lanes. The Arctic route became their lifeline. NATO saw this coming, and they're flooding the Arctic with military assets faster than Russia can build icebreakers. US submarines now patrol under the ice cap. British and Norwegian forces conduct joint exercises in waters Russia considers their backyard. The insurance industry is where this gets really messy. Loins of London won't touch Arctic shipping. The risks are too high. Ice damage. Equipment failure in sub-zero temperatures. Rescue operations that cost millions and take days to coordinate. So Russia created their own insurance system with state-backed coverage for ships using the Northern Sea Route. It's subsidized, it's political, and it's working. Chinese and Indian shipping companies are signing up because the coverage is cheaper than traditional marine insurance. But there's a darker side to Russia's Arctic strategy. They're not just building ports and icebreakers, they're weaponizing the entire route. Submarine bases disguised as research stations, missile systems that can reach any ship within 300 miles of the Russian coast. Radar networks so sophisticated, they can track vessels the moment they enter Arctic waters. Russia's message is simple. This is our ocean. Play by our rules or find another route. The environmental groups are calling this the highway to climate hell. Not because of warming, but because of what happens when you industrialize the Arctic. Oil spills in sub-zero temperatures don't break down. They freeze into toxic ice sheets that persist for decades. A single major accident could contaminate thousands of square miles of pristine Arctic waters and rescue operations. In the middle of the Arctic Ocean, you're looking at response times measured in days, not hours. NATO's counter-strategy is economic warfare, pushing alternative routes hard. Turkey's Canal Istanbul project, Israel's proposed Ben Gurion Canal, even reviving old plans for canals through Thailand and Nicaragua. The goal is simple. Give global shipping so many options that Russia's Arctic route becomes just another choice, not a necessity. But Russia's playing a longer game, not just competing with the Suez Canal. They're positioning themselves to control the shipping lanes of the future. By 2030, Russia could control 25% of global maritime trade. That's not just revenue. That's geopolitical leverage on a scale the world hasn't seen since Britain controlled the seas. China's walking a tightrope here, needing the Arctic route to reduce dependence on Western-controlled shipping lanes. But they also can't afford to alienate their biggest trading partners in Europe and North America. The solution is Chinese companies quietly building ice-capable ships while publicly maintaining they're committed to traditional routes. They're hedging their bets. Russia's ultimate goal isn't just replacing the Suez Canal. It's creating a new center of global power in the Arctic. A region where Moscow sets the rules, collects the fees, and controls the flow of goods between the world's largest economies. The militarization is accelerating. Russia's northern fleet now has more submarines than the rest of their navy combined. Arctic-capable fighters patrol routes that were empty wilderness just five years ago. The stakes have escalated far beyond trade routes to reshaping the global order itself. Russia's betting that control of Arctic shipping will give them the economic and military leverage to challenge Western dominance of international commerce. The question isn't whether Russia can build the infrastructure. They're already doing it. The question is whether the rest of the world will let them control it. The technical challenges are still massive. 
Ice prediction technology can forecast conditions weeks ahead, but Arctic weather changes in hours. A storm that wasn't on any radar can trap a convoy of ships for days. Communication systems fail regularly in the Arctic, where satellite coverage gets spotty near the poles. GPS signals bounce off ice formations and give false readings. Ships navigate using equipment that works perfectly in tropical waters, but glitches when temperatures drop below minus 20. Rescue infrastructure is practically non-existent. If a ship breaks down in the middle of the northern sea route, the nearest help could be 500 miles away. In Arctic conditions, that's a death sentence for crews and cargo. But early adopters are seeing massive benefits, with shipping companies reporting 30% cost savings despite higher insurance premiums. The fuel savings from shorter routes more than offset the specialized equipment costs. The route's biggest weakness is it's still weather dependent. Even with the world's most powerful icebreakers, severe storms can shut down the entire route for weeks. Traditional shipping lanes don't have that problem. Russia's building redundancy into the system, where multiple ports along the route mean ships can take shelter if conditions deteriorate. Emergency supply depots ensure vessels don't run out of fuel waiting for weather to clear. The environmental risks remain enormous, since the Arctic ecosystem is fragile. A major oil spill or cargo accident could devastate marine life that took centuries to establish. Environmental groups are fighting every expansion of the route. Success depends on factors Russia can't control, like continued ice retreat, stable geopolitical relationships with China and other major shipping nations, no major accidents that could shut down insurance coverage permanently. But Russia's committed, treating this as a generational investment. The infrastructure being built now is designed to operate for 50 years. They're betting the Arctic will become more navigable, not less. The route's ultimate test will come during the next global shipping crisis, when the Suez Canal gets blocked again, or when political tensions shut down traditional routes. Will the Northern Sea Route be ready to handle the overflow? Russia's building toward that moment where every icebreaker launched, every port completed, every mile of communication cable laid, is preparation for the day when the world needs an alternative to the Suez Canal. This Arctic gamble could reshape global trade forever, as Russia's betting $150 billion that frozen waters will become the world's most valuable shipping lane. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see which mega projects are rewriting our world's future, right here on Bigger the Better.